gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to ICF's online service today. We're so glad you could join us and we hope that you will enjoy the service. During Lent, I have been looking at this um, Purpose Driven Life again by Rick Warren and I found a lovely poem there which I'd like to share with you. It's a poem who, <clears throat> written by Russell Kelfer and it sums up exactly what we are. You are who you are for a reason. You're part of an intricate plan. You're a precious and perfect, unique design called God's special woman or man. You look like you look for a reason. Our God made no mistake. He knit you together within the womb. You're just what he wanted to make. The parents you had were the ones he chose. And no matter how you feel, they were custom designed with God's plan in mind and they bear the master seal. No, that trauma you faced was not easy, and God wept that it hurt you so, but it was allowed to shape your heart so that into his likeness you grow. You are who you are for a reason. You've been formed by the master's rod. You are who you are, beloved, because there is a God. And could we bow our heads and say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. For we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord our God. Hosanna. Jesus told them still another story. The kingdom of, of heaven is like yeast, he said. A woman mixed it into 60 pounds of flour. The yeast worked its way all through the dough. Mmm, that sounds tasty.
Like yeast and dough, spread the good news of Jesus wherever you go. again from South Yorkshire. Let's pray, shall we? Thank you, Father, for the sun rising each day on your wonderful creation. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to earth and looked at sunrises and the stars you created and now look down upon us prayerfully with forgiveness and love. And Father, we thank you that Palm Sunday is upon us and we can reflect on the scenes of peaceful joy when Jesus lovingly went to his fate, entering the holy city, not as an expected military conqueror, but riding a donkey as a sign of peace, to the people's shouts of Hosanna, that was soon turned to cries of crucify him, because they hadn't understood that he'd not come to end Roman oppression. Father God, you know that our daily lives often don't align with expectations or make sense to us, Help us to cope and understand. Help us embrace the unexpected as we let the love and peace of Jesus into our hearts. Help us apply the incredible truth that in his love he came to bring us peace so we needn't be afraid. Remind us, Lord, as we face difficult days and trying times. Help us to feel the peace of Jesus and through the power and wisdom of your Holy Spirit to live life to the full for your glory enabling us to bravely tell others the good news of Jesus as the conqueror of death, victory through the cross and his resurrection. And we, Father, we thank you that ICF continues to help others through its online services. And we thank you for Joy and her family and the core church family in Portugal and their worldwide supporters. And we pray for all the work they accomplish locally to help the poor and unfortunate. Lord, we pray for King Charles and preparations for his coronation. Guide him in following his, his mother's example of her faithful witness for you as he serves the UK, the Commonwealth and others. We also pray for reconciliations within the royal family. Father, you already know of all the suffering around this fallen world, whether it be war-torn countries such as Ukraine or in places where natural disasters have struck, such as Turkey, Syria, Ecuador and Mississippi, please bring your comfort to all who have been affected and help support aid agencies who do their best to alleviate the situations they find. And we pray for support to all those trying to provide humanitarian care for millions of refugees and others who are without ample food or shelter in these difficult times. We thank you and pray for many countries who willingly and lovingly receive refugees. And we pray for the UK and others to change their hard-hearted attitudes. Holy Spirit, we ask you to give wisdom and compassion to world leaders as they have to deal with challenges such as asylum seekers, poverty and the effects of climate change, such as recent forest fires in the Iberian Peninsula. Also help world leaders deal with energy supply problems partly resulting from their efforts to reduce the world's carbon footprint, exacerbated by Russia's war on Ukraine. We continue to pray that you bring compassion to the heart of Vladimir Putin to bring a peaceful end to the Ukraine war. 
and to withdraw his wider threats of nuclear war. And we ask you to calm escalating tensions created by North Korea's recently revealed nuclear missile capability, and also tensions created by China's increased military activity in the Pacific, countered by the US, Australia and the UK considering deploying nuclear submarines. Lord, we continue to pray for all doctors, nurses and other hospital workers and all public service workers and volunteers as they help care for people. Lord, help them and us to continue to show your compassion to those in need. In your mercy, we ask you to bring relief to all those suffering because of illness, injustice, crime or lack of food, clean water or medication. And may you comfort those who are grieving the death of loved ones, and also bring comfort to the homeless, depressed or lonely, and anyone who feels threatened by their circumstances. We pause for a moment, Lord, for a time of personal prayer, especially for those who need your healing touch. May we all include in our prayers Jackie and Rosie, and also John Tipping, and my elderly sister Denise, currently in hospital after a bad fall. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. Be with us now to carry us day by day in peaceful pursuit of your purpose for our lives. For your kingdom to come and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I'm Julie from Somerset in the UK, but currently I'm in Portugal enjoying your sunshine. The reading today for Palm Sunday is from Mark 11 verses 1 to 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as King. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the Twelve. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us today for our Palm Sunday service. It's so good to have you with us. Let's go to the Lord in a moment of prayer as we open his word together. Dear Lord, I just pray that you would quieten our hearts now and help us to open our minds, our ears, our hearts to hear what it is you'd say to us today. Let us hear your still small voice talking to us. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Now as I read this wonderful Palm Sunday story that we've heard today, there's a short phrase that catches my attention. When the disciples are sent 
to find the cult for Jesus to ride on. We notice that they're simply to say, the Lord needs it. Now this phrase is remarkable for several reasons. The first thing that's surprising is the need. The idea that God needs anything. After all, he's the one who made heaven and earth and all created things. He's the owner of everything. Psalm 50 verse 9 says, I have no need of a bull from your stall or of goats from your pens, for every animal of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains, and the creatures of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. So how is it then that the Lord needs this cult? Well, it's actually a pattern that we see repeated throughout the life of Jesus. When he was a newborn baby, he slept in a feeding trough borrowed from the owner of a cattle shed. When he began his public ministry, he preached from a boat borrowed from a group of fishermen. When he found himself on a hillside preaching the good news of the kingdom to a crowd of hungry people, he used a lunch borrowed from a little boy so that he might feed the multitudes. When he taught people about rightfully paying their taxes to Caesar, he used a borrowed coin to make his point. When he died on the cross, he was laid in a borrowed tomb. And so when Jesus enters Jerusalem as king, he borrows the animal that he will ride on. Why? Because although God is the owner of everything, when he became man, he left his riches behind. In 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, Paul writes, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And so the owner of all things asks for a donkey to ride on. The second thing that's remarkable is the authority with which Jesus speaks. He gives very specific instructions to his disciples. They, two of them, are to go into the next village and as they enter it, they will see a colt tied up. They are to untie it and bring it to Jesus. If anyone questions them, they are simply to say, the Lord needs it. And that's all. There's no questioning, no pleading, no reasons given. The words of Jesus carry weight and authority, first to his disciples who are sent, and then to the owner of the cult who gives up his baby donkey. The words of Jesus call for instant obedience. The two disciples don't question the instructions. They don't say, well, why don't we just walk into Jerusalem? I mean, after all, we walk everywhere else. The owner of the cult doesn't say, can't you use someone else's donkey? Mine is really young and it's, it's not suitable for riding on. Jesus simply speaks the word and his followers obey. Just like when he called four fishermen on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. He just said, come and follow me. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. Jesus speaks with authority. It's curious how such minute details are given in the instructions. It could be that this was an arrangement already made with an unnamed follower of Jesus who lived nearby. We do know that his village was close to Bethany, so it could be that he was a friend of Martha, Mary and Lazarus, uh, and that he had agreed to let Jesus use his donkey and had told him exactly where he would find it. It could also be that Jesus, being God, knew exactly what would happen and where the animal would be. A similar incident is recorded in Mark 14, 12 to 15, which took place a few days later. When the disciples of Jesus asked him where he wanted them to go and prepare Passover, 
for him, the Passover meal, his reply was, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make preparations there. Now in both instances we see that Jesus gives detailed, slightly enigmatic instructions. He can see the future as clearly as we can see the present. We might fast forward a DVD to catch a glimpse of a scene yet to be played out. But in the mind of Jesus the future is as real and as visible as the present because time doesn't make any difference to God. And so here in these words on Palm Sunday, the Lord needs it. We are reminded both of the meekness and the majesty of Jesus. Meekness that the Lord of heaven and earth needs to borrow an animal to ride on. And majesty that the request of Jesus calls for and leads to such unquestioning obedience. Now on Palm Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem publicly for the first time, not secretly going up to the feast, as he had sometimes done before, nor telling his followers to keep quiet about the fact that he was the Messiah, as he had in, at times insisted earlier, but now allowing them to publicly and joyfully welcome him as their king and promised Messiah. Jesus delighted in their praises as they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In Zechariah 9 verse 9, the prophet had foretold, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and bringing salvation, gentle and riding on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In the triumphal procession, Jesus was making a bold announcement that he was the promised Messiah who had come to redeem his people. He wanted to make sure that everyone understood the message. And so he was careful to fulfill every detail of this centuries-old and well-known prophecy, even down to the detail that he would ride on a colt, the foal of a donkey. But we notice that Jesus didn't bring his own donkey. And this brings us to the third aspect that's remarkable in the phrase, the Lord needs it. This detail of Jesus borrowing a man's cult is a reminder of the way that God works. He doesn't work alone in this world, but chooses to involve ordinary people like you and me. Suppose this man had objected to Jesus borrowing his baby donkey. Oh, he could have made excuses. He could have easily said, I don't want anyone taking my colt away from my land. Just leave it right here where it's safe. Or he might have said, you know, my colt's never ridden before. It'll be frightened. But if he had made excuses, if he had said no for whatever reason, he would have missed out on one of the greatest blessings of his life. Imagine how honoured he must have felt later when he saw Jesus riding his donkey into the city in the triumphal procession. Of all the donkeys in Jerusalem and the surrounding villages, he had chosen his little foal to carry the King of Kings through the narrow streets tightly packed with people. It was his little donkey that trotted gracefully over the palm branches as people, people joyfully sang their praises to Jesus. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the coming weeks and months after the death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus, the owner of the donkey would always look at his little foal with a special joy that Jesus had chosen to use something that was his. And that's how it is with us too. God wants to use us and the things that he has given us in the work of his kingdom. 
we can make excuses. We can say, oh Lord, choose someone else. Or, you know, Lord, I really don't think that's a good idea. Or, I'm sorry, but I've, I've really got more important things to do right now. But if we do, we'll be missing out on the greatest privilege of our lives too. And that is for God to use us. Instead, when the Lord asks something of us, let's consider it an honour and let's do what he wants gladly. You know, the Lord needs us. He needs us just as he needed the donkey that day on Palm Sunday as he announced his kingdom, announced that he was the king and messiah to the whole world. So he needs us today to continue the work of his kingdom. That's how God works. And it's an honor and it's a privilege to be used by him. So let's accept his uh, invitation gladly and not make excuses. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful story we read today that shows us your meekness. It shows us your majesty. It shows us the way that you work in your kingdom. Lord, help us to take to heart the fact that just as you needed that man to give his donkey on Palm Sunday, and he gladly obeyed. Lord, help us to realize that you need us too. In the mysterious way that you work in your kingdom, you need us. You need ordinary people, men and women, to do your work, to carry out your mission in this world. And just as the man that day gladly obeyed, gladly gave up what was his in your service, help us to do the same, Lord. Help us not to make excuses, but to allow us, allow you to use us as you see fit and help us to see it as an honour and a privilege, which it truly is. Lord, we make ourselves available to you this day. Use us, we pray, however you choose. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Love and destruction. 